Now, just before we move on, this thing here, why do you think it's useful? Why did they include it? To compare it to other bills? Yeah, comparison is really important when you're trying to monitor how much utility you're using and how much money you're spending on it. Okay? So for example, uh, I noticed there's a big change between this bill and the same period last year. Now the first question I'm going to ask is, why do they even have the same period last year? Why do they compare um, this chunk of time this year versus this chunk of time last year? Why is that important? Because it, uh, when you're in this season it's in, so if it's winter or summer, it could fluctuate how much electricity they use. Fantastic. So let me ask you this. When do you think, when would you guess, being that it is actually seasonal, when would you guess is the time in the year that you use the least electricity? Spring. If you're in Australia? In Australia, summer is when you use the most electricity. Because cooling things down takes a lot more power than heating things up. So I, I ask for the least amount. What do you think is the least? It's going to be a bit of a tie between autumn and spring. This one does fluctuate year to year. Let me ask you this. We've already settled, okay, summer is hot, so we cool things down. Winter is cold, so we do warm things up. So it'll be one of these temperate times. Which do you, I mean, just as an approximate, which do you think would use more power? Just take a guess. Spring, winter, autumn. It's autumn now. Let me ask you this. When do people tend to, when does um, the, our, our environment, when do we tend to get the most rain? Okay, now, I, I don't teach geography. I do know, for example, we have had a particularly yeah. rainy autumn, right? Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, uh, generally speaking, historically, I think mostly you'd say spring. In fact, that's why we call them spring rains. That's a thing. All I'm pointing out is, when it's raining, we do tend to use more power. Anyone know why? What? Like, that's <laughs> that's okay, because you need more light. Okay, usually it has to do with humidity. If it's really humid, people don't like it to be really humid. Uh, it causes lots of problems, not just discomfort. So what do we do when it's humid? You turn on usually the dehumidifier or the air conditioning or something like that. Okay. Yes. We're in autumn right now. Yes, that's the first half of the year, so, which is yeah. Yeah. yep. What's a humidifier? So you've got so you've got humidifiers and dehumidifiers, which are useful in different climates. A humidifier, wait for it, makes things humid, right? So for example, for example, if you go to a really dry place, a really dry um, and hot place, what you'll find is like like many parts of Australia, um, paint just peels off outside the house, inside the house, because if your paint is water-based, which a lot of paints are, then it'll dry out and it'll flake off. If you, if you live in a house that's reasonably old, that's what happens. So if it's not humid enough, then this causes problems for your structure, so you might want to humidify the air. There are also like health benefits and what have you. Okay, um, and dehumidifiers, surprisingly. Many things less humid. Many things less humid. Say that again. How is that different to like uh, it doesn't change the temperature, at least not intentionally. It just changes how much water content is in the air. Okay. Let's move on. That was a nice side tangent. Uh, it says, what are we up to, guys? Which question? D. Part D. The cost of usage is broken down into... Peak energy rate, shoulder energy charge, and off-peak energy charge. Okay. Pause. I don't, I'm not interested in um, when it is, but why is there such a thing as peak and off-peak? Why is there such a thing as two different times? Uh, um, more important or like busier times, so like lots of people do washing on Sundays, so you don't do it on Sunday. Okay, so a lot of power usage is just consistent all the time. In fact, one of the biggest power users in your house is on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can't ever switch it off, otherwise you're in some trouble. Does anyone know what it is? Fridge. Your fridge and your freezer, right? So they're going all the time, but there are some things which are only on some of the time. Example? Uh, more examples? TV. You know, there are things that people are on when you're... Okay, ah, now, interestingly, so I'm gonna say things like uh, TV, because someone needs to be there to watch it. Uh, lights because only in certain periods of the day, but I'm going to pause at washing machine because this is actually a very important counterexample. 
Washing machines are often used at particular times of the day, but we can control when we use them and there's a really good reason to do that. Does anyone know how long a typical wash cycle is? It will vary depending on how many clothes you're washing and how dirty your clothes are. You guys should find this out. It will vary between an hour, if it's just like your daily, like chuck your shirt in, it's not that dirty but it needs a, it needs a wash, up to four hours. Four hours is a really long time, but if you have an energy saving washing machine, we're going to talk about those later, uh, my, my cycle goes for four hours and 15 minutes. Wow. That's a really long time, okay? Now, just think about this, okay? Let's go for a weekend, okay? You wake up on a weekend. If the first thing that you do is put the washing machine on for a four hour and 15 minute cycle, what time is it gonna be when it finishes? Well, it depends on when you wake up, but just so you know, give me an estimate. Four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> You're going to miss most of the sunlight and warmth of the day, right? So instead of waiting until you first wake up to put the machine on, what are you gonna do instead? Put it on at night, put on at night, put on a timer so that you have to think about when it's going to start so that when you wake up, it's just finished and you're ready to go. Okay. Now, why does this make sense? It's not just because I want to, you know, get the right time of the day. Okay. But energy costs, well, I know this sounds silly, but energy, electricity takes energy to create. There's only certain amounts of generators out in the world. Does anyone remember when there was this really bad, when the really bad heat wave came through and it was 40 degrees, what did the government tell us to do? It said, don't put on your air conditioning. Instead, <laughs> go to a, yeah, and die. They'd say, go, go to the pool, go to a shopping center, because they're not going to switch their aircon off, right? And I wonder if you guys walk through, like, I don't know, Cherubal Village or something like that, and there's people just all sitting on couches. They're not shopping, they're just, or Castle towers. towers. You go to Towers and it's like, there's no shops here. People are just sitting there, right? Now, the reason why is because there's not some limitless supply of electricity that we can just dip into, right? What kinds of ways do we generate electricity? Wind. Coal. Coal? Yeah. Can't you generate Gas. Wind. Solar. Yeah. Sunlight. Solar. Dams. Hydroelectricity. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but my point is there's not an infinite amount. Okay. So they want you not to use it all at the same time. So therefore, have a look. Look on the page. Where do you see information about peak and off-peak? In that corner, it's half. There's two places you can see it. Can you tell me the two places? It's down here? No, the graph. And then there's up there. Yeah, there's, there's these as well. Okay. So peak, it's not because energy costs more money to use at a particular time. All they're trying to do is discourage you from using it at peak times. Does that make sense? It's not like, oh, oh no, it's 6 p.m. Electricity is magically more expensive now to actually generate. It's the same cost all the time. They just want to push you towards using it at particular times. Peak, off peak. What do you think shoulder is? So uh, if you've got a spot on your page, I want you to draw uh, a little rough graph. I want you to label it costs and time. What do you think peak time is? I'll probably say around dinner time. That's, that's my guess because, because everyone, uh, the lights come on, cooking comes on, all kinds of things happen. Okay. So let's just call, well, let's say uh, you've got 12, Midnight, okay, let's put, sorry, I'm gonna move this. Let's put noon in the middle. So then you come back to midnight again, okay. So I would estimate peak time, here's 6 p.m. right there, right in between, in between 12 noon and 12 midnight. So in between there, electricity costs lots. I've got a high line up there, okay. At other times, I'm just gonna simplify this. At other times, maybe it doesn't cost as much, so it's a bit lower, okay? But they don't just flip a switch and say, whoa, we went from cheap to expensive. They have this period where it transitions, right? Like that, okay? So that transition period, that's the shoulder, right? It's in between peak and off peak. So that's the rough idea, and you can see the costs that are associated with that if you have a look up. Uh, we've actually skipped over the question itself. It said, what percentage of usage occurred in the shoulder period? Can you answer that? What percentage? 50.54. 50.54, right there. Okay. It also asks, how about the off-peak period? And your answer would be? 14.54. 14 14 Very good. So now, uh, when you're looking at the questions, you'll need to skip two pages. 
and it says, okay, let's look at these peak times and off-peak off times. It now asks, what's the peak energy rate per kilowatt hour? That's the cost. That doesn't come down in this usage breakdown, so look back up. We're looking for peak energy rate. That's the cost. What is it? Have a look. Peak energy rate. Peak energy rate. 47.7. I think it's this number. I think it's that number there. Oh, yeah. Okay. In question D, when I ask for like the cost of yes. the usage, would that be the cost on the right hand side of it? <coughs> Sorry, so we're looking at part, you're asking about part D, yep. and it says the cost of usage is, so the first question is just how much usage was in the shoulder period? Okay. What percentage of usage? We'll come to the cost in a second. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna answer this cost question very shortly. Um, the way that you can know, okay, because in a second I'm gonna leave you to your own devices, right? It says peak energy rate, right? So I'm looking for peak energy. Can you see where it says that over here? There's peak energy. Right? And it says rate, but then when you look across to the right, there's a whole bunch of numbers. How do you know which one is the rate? <laughs> See that there? Rate. So this column, all of these are the rates for time. Okay. Yes. So the cost of electricity does change according to the... Okay, so let me distinguish. Right? The cost of electricity for you, the cost you have to pay changes based on time. Okay. But the cost of making electricity is no different like from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. There's nothing that makes the factories work different. It's that they're trying to discourage you from everyone using it at the same time. Okay. Right? I thought so, you just meant the government before, but like the actual companies make it more expensive. Well, the, these rates are generally set by the government. Right? Oh. So, question. Oh, I just heard a comment. Yes. Relevant comment. Um, in England, just after East Enders, right, where they, the um, energy got it. <laughs> Are you serious? Go ahead. <laughs> um, the energy levels of energy companies for all the energy places and stuff, they would have to increase the power, level of power to stop the East Enders because everyone put on their kettles. Yep. <laughs> The yeah. Is this what we're talking about? Because I'm yeah, really No, it hasn't that specifically. But here's the idea, right? If you are a government and you want to encourage some behaviours and discourage other ones. The main, the main thing we do is we just use economics. If you make something expensive, less people will do it. That's why if you ever notice, if you have a, um, like take a bus into the city, just look out when the bus is going along a tollway, right? And you'll notice the signs on the side of the road when it says cost for this vehicle, that vehicle, the cost has a, like a, a variable part in it because they change based on the time. Does that make sense? They want you to travel during off-peak traffic periods. Okay, we're almost done for the parts I'm gonna guide you through. Uh, right there at the top of the page, it says, last one we're gonna do together. What's the difference between the peak and off-peak rates per kilowatt hour? All right, look carefully. Which one's peak and which one's off-peak? You just told me the peak. It's 47.77. 11.9. 11. 11.9 11. 11. is the off-peak. So what are you going to do with these two numbers? You're going to subtract. Okay, that'll give you a number. And that is the answer. What's the difference? Okay.